Well, thank you very much for the kind invitation for us to come here and talk uh, about our work at Uppsala University. And I'm sure that we have at least as much to learn from you as you have from us. The Worldwide Fund for Nature has named Uppsala the 2018 Global Climate City of the Year. Uh, the award is known as the One Planet City Challenge and the jury writes, Uppsala emerged as a clear global winner in this year's challenge due to its ambitious work including broad cross-societal initiatives, strong regional leadership, and a focus on knowledge transfer. Uppsala has ambitious, innovative, and science-based targets for renewable energy, sustainable mobility, and more. The jury particularly appreciated Uppsala's investment in transport infrastructure. Although Uppsala is a small city, the jury believes it serves as a global example. Well, being in a city with ambitious climate targets makes life easier for us. We operate in a very positive context, and the new findings from a university presented by our un researchers receives a warm welcome, both at home and globally. It's also easier for our staff and students to live in a more sustainable way if we live in a city like Uppsala. And also, it creates an excellent condition for us to have projects to together with the city, city planning, and so forth. Last week, we held the grand ceremony for new professors at Uppsala University. As a president or vice chancellor, you are supposed to give a speech. My message to the new professor was that they have both the responsibility and also the power to give our complex world solutions and also reasons to, to have hope. I spoke about their mission to work towards the targets defined in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and to do what they can to make the world a better place. At Uppsala University, we often talk about the demands that are rightly made of us and what we can do to promote goals set by the United Nations. And that is to how we achieve social, economical, environmental sustainability by 2030. Our main goal and vision for the university is to contribute to a better world. And I think, think this is what it's all about being a university. More, no more, no less. And I, I would say we do contribute in many ways, big and small. Some things Uppsala University are known for is the battery research, energy solutions, solar cells, smart materials, our work on antibiotic resistance, peace and conflict research, geology, meteorology, language education. We teach over 50 languages at our university. These are a few examples. We have a long history. We are a university founded in 1477. And we also have a long history of sustainability. The first person published a paper on the greenhouse effect and the capacity of carbon dioxide capture heat radiation, that was Svante Arrhenius, and he did so in 1896. He grew up in Uppsala, studied at Uppsala University, and went on to win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Locally, in Uppsala, we have a close collaboration with our neighbor, the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, 
And also, internationally, we collaborate on sustainability with partners around the world. One example is the project that we coordinate in South Africa called SASUF, where we work on sustainability together with 23 universities in South Africa. Another example is one of the several hubs at our university, CEMUS, the Center for Environmental and Development Studies. And as the name suggests, this center raises and promotes knowledge about uh, sustainability. This started out as a student initiative. At the beginning in the 80s, 90s, two students at Uppsala University, I'm not sure it was only two, but it was two that spoke up lively. They were disappointed on us uh, by the lack of courses or forums that dealt with the most crucial environmental and development issues of the time in an interdisciplinary way. They worked out a proposal for a seminar series on the topics. To their surprise, the students themselves were given the task to further develop the proposal and also running the course, which uh, came, uh, the name became Humanity and Nature. That was the basis of CEMOS that were founded in 1995, a very wise decision of one of my predecessors. And I had the opportunity to celebrate 20 years of activities of the center a couple of years ago. And this is a joint center between Uppsala University and our neighbor, the Swedish University of Ag Agriculture Sciences in Uppsala. And it has ever since functioned as a creative mating place for students, our university employees, and other people who have a great interest in environmental and development issues. I do think this story is typical. Evolution revolution comes from you, the students. You who see things and understand things that sometimes the established structure and also us, presidents and professors and vice chancellors, <coughs> have difficulties of grasping. So I. I'm really happy for every new generation of students that put the pressure on us to change. I also would like to mention Svedest, the Swedish government national coordinator for the UNESCO Global Action Program on Education for Sustainable Development. This is a center at Uppsala University, and it aims to be a resource for the entire field of knowledge. They develop policy documents, curricula, learn, learn, curricula and learning environments, builds teachers and trainers' capacity, sets up collaborations with local or region, on the local and regional level on learning for st so, uh, sustainable development. Its focuses, its work focuses on sustainable development goal number four, and that is, I think, as you all know, quality education, but I do think they make con substantial contribution to the always all the 17 sustainable development goals. Well, these are two examples of our initiatives. But although, I can stand here and brag about that we have had researchers who have told us that happened, what happened in global warming for more than 100 years. I must say, we have turned a deaf ear to the warnings. And not only us, I know. But I do think it's time for all of us to listen. And we have to do this also in the context of other developments. Two weeks ago, we had a conference on internationalization in Uppsala. The theme of the conference was how to move from strategy to action. The background is that the Swedish government have recently presented an internationalization report with a strategic agenda 
that includes eight goals. And with a clear vision, it says, Sweden must be the most attractive, attractive international knowledge nation with education and research for world of world-leading quality. International understanding and intercultural competence will be a natural and integral part of education and research. Internationalization at higher education institution depend on cons constructive collaboration with society at large and effective coordination between governmental agencies with a view of solving national and global challenges. And for the first time, the government and also demand and the law will be changed in the Swedish context to actually connect internationalization with quality and sustainability development. And I think it's very interesting to have an and and not a but in between quality, internationalization, and sustainability. And it will be a challenge for us to really have an and and not a but. These days, I think most of everyone realize that internationalization has to be a concern and responsibility for everybody within a university. I would say sustainability is the same, uh, but it also must inspire not only what we do with research and education, but also to us personally as people. I do think most people share this insight. The students who took the initiative uh, for CEMOS at Uppsala University realized that long time ago. Svantan and Renius understood the greenhouse effect 120 years ago. Now the world is realizing it. We can be sorry it has taken so long, but I, I find I prefer to say I'm happy that we've finally woken up. We have to move forward, and I think you, our students at our universities, you are the key, and you will be the change agents. We must accept that it's time to pay off the unsecured loans we have taken out, and we have taken them from your future, and that we do to finance our living of today. In Sweden's largest daily newspaper, Dagens Nyheter, a group of researchers recently wrote an article that accused us, the universities, of failing to practice what we preach. They wrote that our data and our knowledge does not lead us to change our behavior. In my experience, and listening to the students, I do think you quite often share this perception and telling us and, and encourage us to take action. And I'm all in favor. We need you and we need your energy. And I do not think it's a local phenomena here or at Uppsala. Look at the students at the top universities in France who recently declared that they are willing to change the way of living and lower the demand to work for company that live up to their ideals. And I think their attitude is a game changer for all of us. As I told you, Uppsala University operates in a city with ambitious goals and that talks about leading the way. But goals can be fine words and no substance. It's high time to find ways, ways to get real. Looking at myself critically, I can say sometimes plus, sometimes minus. I have no car because I live in a way and I'm privileged enough that I don't have to have a car. I just might not have the situation. I have made the choice long time ago that I don't eat meat any longer. But I took the plane here and I will take the plane later on today. 
I have to admit that definitely flying have a negative in, uh, impact on my account. As the foremost representative of my university, I often have to be, be there when we want to meet representatives of other universities and organizations, as we have done here the last couple of days, having the U4, U5 meeting, and discussing the future of our, our universities, how we, we join forces and we will apply to become a university, uh, European university. And then I can say, within that work, during the last couple of days, your president is the one that fought hardest to make a work package uh, for sustainable issues, and you should be really, really proud and grateful you have such an active uh, president on these issues. I will. We have a visiting professor at Seaman, Seamus. His name is Kevin Anderson. He took, he had made a choice to not fly any longer. I don't know how many years, is it 10, 15 years? <coughs> yes. And he only travels in ways that do not have a ne negative impact. I find this very inspiring and impressing. And, and I think it's important for us to see how we can make it easier to make the right choice. One way we're trying at Uppsala University is to improve the technology so it always should work, that we can have web meetings and so forth. And the conflict between the goal of sustainable development and the goal of internationalization is a problem that we have to solve. And as I said before, yes, it is a challenge. But every step in the right direction counts. We try to think creatively in these issues. And one small step that we have taken for the first time is to offer all our Erasmus students funding if they choose to take the train instead of the, their uh, fly, uh, flight to the host university around Europe. This is a very small step, but an important step. And I think taking many, many small steps by many people, we will actually go quite a far away. Uppsala University is right now revising our goals and strategy for the university for the coming next 10 years. And we have the mission now to integrate internationalization, quality, and sustainability to change the but to an end, to, to actually take the challenge and, and to deal with the goal conflicts between the different issues. And as was said before, we're dealing with dilemmas in a creative way. And I am here today with my advisor, not only, I would say not only mine, it's also the whole university's advisor on sustainable issue, Professor Anna, Anna Rutgerson. Her task is to make sure that sustainability issues are on my agenda and the university's agenda but also to develop new plans for the sustainable, uh, sustainability efforts and help us to continuously improve and uh, pursue on a, co a constructive course for the university. She will tell you a little bit more about what we're doing right now. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Uh, it's very nice to be here. So I have the privilege and the challenge to advise uh, mainly on the core activities of the university concerning sustainable development. Uh, I, I think that where the universities actually can make the major difference uh, for a more sustainable world is by the, the education and by the research. Uh, and in collaboration with students, and it's obvious a day like this, that, uh, that uh, the students are the future, and if we manage to, to give the students that we educate at the university a good base for, for being citizens, 
that we really can make a big difference to society. And also the research we are doing, if we can manage to develop knowledge, methods, technologies uh, for a sustainable society, then we really can make a big difference. So I think that's the core, that's the main purpose of my work, is to try to make this more effective throughout the entire university. So I will not talk so much more about uh, what we are doing education-wise. I will talk a little bit about what we try to do concerning research. And of course, research and education are closely interlinked. Uh, we have defined Uppsala University is a broad, very excellent university with a lot of subjects that do excellent research. But collaboration between areas is sometimes a little bit difficult in a big and broad university. So to address this, we have defined what we call uh, UCI, Uppsala University Sustainability Ish Initiatives. And the purpose is to use the strong, good research that we do together interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary to address some of the big challenges of society. So we choose some aspect of sustainable development. We want to use the broad university where we really have a large potential for collaboration. And we wish to make the research collaborate, but also to expose and to strengthen the ongoing research and to better apply the work we are doing in collaboration with society and important societal actors. So we are defining a few uh, of these focus initiatives. <coughs> and we have started this pro process already. And one suggestion is to work on climate change leadership. It's a very ambitious title, and that's the main, uh, the first uh, initiative or the first network or platform that we are aiming at. And of course, if we think about climate change leadership, it includes a lot of different aspects. It includes leadership, it includes uh, addressing policies, regulations. Of course, education is a key aspect but also, as we heard earlier today, IT, new communication platforms, is something that we need to involve in this initiative. Also so sociology, behavior, science, and climate. We are looking at climate and climate change, so we should not, as a metrologist, I wouldn't like to forget about the climate processes. So we have gathered the good scientists that we have at Uppsala University uh, from these areas and, and ask them, so what can you do together? How can we at Uppsala University, what would be the research we would like to do to address climate change leadership? What came out was three focus areas and education was one of the key areas. And then I think we should again look at ourselves a little bit. How do we in the university sector <coughs> make sure that the students, that you, uh, keep the engagement that, and enthusiasm that you have when you enter the university system. So we need to be a bit reflective on, on how we treat the students or what we do with the students in the process of getting a higher education. The second focus area was policies and governance. So how do we make structural changes in political, legal, business structures to allow for change? And this is a very difficult question. But we have scientists working in these areas and we think that if they really look at this and work together we can make at least some steps ahead. And the third focus area that we identified is adaptation. So there is, we, have, we are living in a changing climate and how big the changes are we are not, depends on how the society evolves but it is changing. And then it's important to prepare society for these changes. We have, will have changes in social structure and in migration patterns. And how do we as a society respond to these changes? So these are the focus area we are working on. Uh, so I will give you some examples of already existing research in these areas to, to show what, what can come out of or what we will continue on in, in these initiatives. So one thing that I learned uh, from our uh, university is this, so what do the university do with the students? And I think this was a very interesting study. It was um, students from the computer science program. So they asked the students when they entered the computer science program in Uppsala, so how do they see their role in the society? How do they think their education could contribute to a sustainable society? And what, what did they want to do with their studies? Um, 
And so it was an interview study with quite some many students. And uh, this is an example to illustrate the, the, the uh, outcome of the study. So um, when coming into the program, the students said the connection between computer science and political science comes naturally. So they were very open to their own topic in relation to other topics and how the role was for the sustainable development. But when, when um, interviewing the students after they went through the program, uh, they, they, they were much uh, more focused on their own topics. So the students said one misses a lot when combining politics and computer science. Uh, the only way to get the point right is to look at reality. So the students throughout the educational system, they went from being interested in their topic, but also in their topic in relation to, to other topics. But when they went out of the university system, they were much more oriented on the technical details of their own subject. And, and of, maybe this is a natural thing, uh, but it's also a problem. We need to think what we do with the students in the, in the university system and how we introduce sustainable development and, and to, to make the students realize they are a part of a more general concept. And this was computer science in Uppsala, and I don't think that's a unique program for Uppsala University or in general at all. So I think one needs to be self-reflected, not only what the traveling we do or, or the way the, the actions influence the climate, for example. We also need to think about what do the education do with our systems, with our students when they enter the systems. So the conclusion from this study is that there is a gap between the, the societal challenges and university enterprises when it comes to, to, to the education. But this needs to be looked at by asking students, doing research and see how can we get away from this concept. <coughs> Just some other examples. Uh, this is from Swedes that Eva talked about already. So we have this sustainable uh, education for sustainable development uh, center and some examples of the findings or the work that they are doing at, at Sviedest, uh, which is uh, maybe not entirely new to you, but I mean, we always, we know that knowledge doesn't automatically lead to change, that we heard today already and we, we know this. And education for sustainable development cannot be reproductive. It needs, then we need to reproduce the, the unsustainable development. And education and learning are open change processes. And in Sweden, or in Sviedest, uh, they are looking at education for sustainable development in the Nordic context, but also in other uh, areas of the world. But for the Nordic context, it's uh, the understanding is uh, it's a creative and open process in relation to the socio-economic, ecological context. And higher education for a sustainable future cannot be reduced to what we already know, but it needs to be characterized by university ideals of curiosity, quest, and wonder. So this is one group that is a key group in this climate change leadership platform that we are developing. Uh, I just want to, to change topic to, to another example of the work we are doing. So we have a change in climate and it's a big, uh, it's a risk that uh, th this might lead to increased conflicts and changed migration pattern. Uh, so we have one group that studied the security implications of climate variability. So they looked in their study, they looked at, at Africa and they looked at, at drought. So is there a link between conflicts in Africa and drought? And this is uh, uh, looking at some past period of time. And the key findings from their study is that if we have a growing sea drought, it has no significant impact on civil conflict out, outbreak. So no increased conflicts due to the drought. But they, had, uh, they realized that um, the, the, the extent of the conflicts and the impact, of course, on the people of the conflict had a significant impact of the drought. So this is an example from an African study and it needs to be expanded to globally uh, to, to other areas in order to, to make a better understanding. But it's really an important question, so these migration patterns and conflicts and, and climate change. Um, one other 
aspect which is really important that we will address in, in, uh, in our platforms is the energy. And we heard before that R Uppsala University is very prominent when it comes to research on, on batteries and renewable energy. But traditionally we have been quite technique oriented, natural science and technology oriented in this research. And what we are doing now is to strengthen the link to, to the understanding of energy in the societal context <coughs> and the political efforts and, and, um, and also the, the resource of, of uh, uh, fuel resource. So this is an other aspect that we will focus more in order to, because it's really important when we look at sustainable development to use the broad competence. We cannot be very in our own topics. We need to broaden the, the work significantly. Uh, we heard before Eva talked about Kevin Anderson, our Sandstrom professor who doesn't fly anymore. And uh, this is, uh, he is one in a, a range of, of visiting professors that we have in Uppsala University. So by a donation by Niklas Sandström, the Skype founder, we are able to hire uh, <coughs> high international profiles when it comes to climate change leadership. So we are now uh, soon hiring or soon appointing the, the third climate change leadership. So Doreen Strabinski started and she was working very much with the Paris Agreement, with activist movement and worked very much with students and education. Then we have had Kevin Anderson visiting for a period of time and he has more into the carbon research, the resource, climate change uh, and changing society. And now uh, we will appoint Kerry Faser starting next year and she is very focused on the role of the university in a changing process. So we're really looking forward to linking her into the research that we are doing at Uppsala University. So this is some examples of work that we are doing and I will um, uh, end it here and thank you for listening.